So today I'm going to go over some of the um, different methods of holding a project on the lathe. And um, these are just some of the methods I use. So um, please do your own research and figure out what's, uh, what's safe for you and what isn't. And um, I'll start from there and we'll get started. So one of the uh, simplest methods for spindle turning is simply a spur center and of course your tail stock and your spindle can go between centers It is a uh, safe, safe way of turning spindle stock. Uh, an even safer method is to use a safety center rather than the regular spur center. And here I have a safety center. It has a, uh, a tip in it that's spring loaded. It goes into your Morse taper there. The spring loaded tip. The good thing about this one too is uh, if you're trying to center something up that's you know little uh, the center's not certain on it this will allow you to turn it on that point without the drive coming in contact and then you can move you can move the center on the pin until you get it to where you want it and then you just drive it in with the with the uh, tailstock, and it's a good, safe way to drive. It's a really good way. I teach my grandkids how to turn using the safety center, and if they if they take too big a bite, it just slides on the uh, on the center, and uh, nothing happens. Another center drive I have that is um, a much more aggressive uh, method, and I use it a lot for turning uh, bigger stuff for it and stuff that's off off center, natural edge. It's called a big bite, made by one way. And it goes in there one way chuck and it's self centering in there. And you can turn up to 24 inches with this. The good thing about it again is it's got that point on it, and you can put your wood in between centers and then you can turn it and you can look and see, or you can turn the whole thing, you can look and see whether you got it lined up. And this, this is a little off, so I can, I can adjust that side a little bit. Or I can adjust the other side. And once I get it to where I want it to go, I just drive it onto that spur. And I've turned some pretty big, ugly, heavy pieces with that, uh, with that drive. And it's a great way to put it on there and create yourself your mortise or tenon. The, the, then you can turn around and put it in chuck. <clears throat> so that's uh, the big bite spur center. And this is a stronghold chuck. I have two. I have two stronghold chucks. Um, it's one of the biggest uh, trucks that One Way makes, and um, my thought was when I bought it was I can I can hold big stuff with a big chuck, or I can hold little stuff with little chuck. But if I bought a little chuck, it's restricting, and you can't necessarily turn larger items. So uh, 
uh, two identical trucks, and that means that my jaws are all interchangeable. So this is their number two set of jaws. And uh, on a tenon, it's good for inch and three quarters to three and a quarter inches, tenon size. And in, in a recess or a mortise, it's good for two and three eighths to four inches. Now with any of these jaws, the closer you have them to being closed, the stronger they hold. So for instance, with this number two set, if I turn that down, well, to about, you see that gap there, about that kind of gap, that's its strongest holding because you're closest to a perfect circle here, in which case, it will grab all the way around on the tenon, rather than if you take it out to something that size and try and put on, you are now only grabbing on the corners. And it's not near as strong a hold, so a lot of rookie turners think that they want a bigger tenon. If you want a bigger tenon, get bigger jaws. Don't expand your jaws out. The, the closer your jaws are to close, the stronger they hold. The other thing that rookie turners sometimes do is they make their tenon too deep. The, the jaws are designed so that this surface here rides on that flat surface there and the jaws squeeze on this surface and this surface is not to be contacted at all so you don't want this deep enough that it will bottom out in your jaws so as you can see here I ignore this in the middle here but this tenon is not hitting the back surface of the jaw the jaw is riding on this surface in here and this surface here and that's how they're engineered to work so again, don't go too big a diameter with your tenon and don't go too deep with your tenon. And uh, so that tenon for, that's on this piece of wood is almost perfect for, for those jaws because it's, it's fair, fairly deep in the jaw but not to the base and the jaws are uh, not closed entirely but they're close to that full circle. So that's the number two set of jaws. I have the number three set as well, which is just that much bigger. And they go from three and seven eighths to five and a quarter on a tenon or four and a half to six inches on a recess. And then I also have a set of spigot jaws and uh, they are uh, three eighths to two inch or one and an eighth to two and five eighths in an in expand mode. So those are the types of jaws and, and trucks that I have. And uh, there's no doubt about it. If you turn for very long at all, you're gonna want, you're gonna want a uh, chuck, at least one chuck. It makes things so much easier and quicker. So another, when I first, started turning and before I could afford to, to buy chucks and such I had to find different ways of holding wood. Uh, one method is what's called a Longworth chuck and I made this one. I need an adapter because I made it for a lathe I've had in the past which is a different size. And this is a good method to hold a bowl in to finish the bottom of the bowl and take the, the tenon off. And the way it works is you just loosen these and you can slide and as you see when you slide that these all these rubber stoppers come out to the end of these grooves 
and it expands. Or you can close it. And it gets much smaller. And that's how you expand and contract it to hold the bowl. So that's a that's a pretty good uh, method for for holding a, a finished bowl that you want to take the bottom off or do some sort of decorative detail to the bottom, that sort of thing. Another homemade project I made is this donut chuck. And it sort of serves the same purpose. So you take these bolts out, take this plate off, you put your bowl on and put this plate back on and it pinches it in there and again allows you to do detail on the bottom of your bowl without having your tailstock up in the way. Um, you can make different size donuts, you can make different size rings for the outside or what I did with this is I took some um, hard particle board uh, or hard, hard, I think they call it hard board and I cut different size holes in it and I just put it in behind this and I can use it for different size bowls. The one thing I don't like about this system is these are extremely dangerous. If you, if, if that's spinning and you get your hand back there somehow, um, yeah, that's, that's an ugly picture I don't even want to think about. So, uh, I'll show you a little later in this video uh, the method I use to replace both of these. And so I haven't used these in years. There's another, I don't have them, but there's another um, system you can get. They're called jumbo jaws. So there's a set of removable jaws like this that go on your chuck, but they're they're flat and they're they're quite large and they have all kinds of holes in them. And there's rubber rubber stoppers like this that you you place in the holes on the jaws at whatever distance, whatever diameter you want, and then you just use your regular scroll on your chuck to move the jaws in and out to tighten on it. Uh, I don't have a set to show you, but they're called uh, jumbo jaws or coal jaws, and they're, uh, they work similar to the, to the Longworth other than the, the chuck moves them in and out instead of the, instead of the uh, twisting. Another way you can hold something is directly in the spindle. So if you want to turn, for instance, a three-cornered box, a three-cornered box starts off. Oh, I gotta take that tip out of there. I'll be right there. three-cornered box starts off being held on its corners like that and so you can just put it right in the headstock spindle and in a in a cone type center there and you turn it that way and you end up with this point and that point and that point as the tops of the bowl and down here you turn a, a tenon to put in the chuck or a blue block or however you're going to do it. 
but that's how you start off and you start off with it just right in the spindle or if you're turning spindle work like this you could pare this down with a with an axe or anything doesn't matter and then just drive it into the spindle head just take it and tap it in and uh, into the more taper and that'll be a friction drive and that works uh, just fine too One of the safest ways to mount a piece of wood is with a face plate. So you take the block of wood, you need a, a relatively flat surface to put it on. Uh, this is good enough, it's you know, just chainsawed, but that, that's good enough. And you find the center, and you put that on, and then you just screw it in place. And, uh, this has 24 screw holes in it, and when I turn large blocks of wood, 100 and some odd pounds, like for starting a full-size cowboy hat, I use every hole. I put a screw in every hole. Uh, don't use drywall screws. They're, they're dangerous, they'll snap, they're no good. Um, some wood you have to pre-drill a hole, other wood you don't, you can, just, you can just drive the screws in, and if you put a little wax or soap on them, uh, you have less chance of breaking them off uh, in the wood. But uh, so that just gets screwed on there and then threads onto your headstock and you've got it mounted and then you can round it off and put a tenon on the bottom or do whatever it is you want you know, that way. Another method is to use a woodworm screw and most chuck manufacturers give you a worm, woodworm screw with the chuck. This is one way. It's specifically designed to fit in their chuck. And you just drill a hole in the center of your workpiece. the wood on. And there you have it. Now with a piece like this, it's so out of balance and out of shape, I would bring up my tailstock as well until I got it balanced and cleared out. And then I can take my tailstock away and I can carve out the bowl or I can make a tenon and turn it around or whatever I'm going to do. Now, in this case, of course, there's wood where it would be a tenon or, or a spigot on this, or a uh, mortise on this side, and turn it around, and your bowl would come out of this side, because this is the side that's got the hole in it. Now sometimes they get so tight on there that you can't unscrew them like this. It just it uh, it just binds up against the the face of the chuck from all the turning. In that case, you can actually open your chuck jaws until this will come out with it, and then just use a wrench to pull that out. I've had to do that on numerous occasions. The other thing you can use is glue blocks. And a glue block can be used either in a, in a chuck like this because you don't have enough waste wood in your project, or it can be a piece of wood that's, that's um, attached to a face plate and then the glue block is glued to that. I use glue blocks uh, Occasionally, not very often, but occasionally when I have something very small that doesn't have enough substance to have waste in it. For instance, this is a tagua nut, and uh, commonly referred to as vegetable ivory. And uh, when I'm turning it, what I do is I just 
super glue it to that block between centers, drop some super glue in there. Let the super glue cure, leave the tail stock up, turn it into to round and if I'm going to add whatever shape I want and if I'm going to hollow it, then by then I can take the tail stock away and the glue holds it on the glue block and I can hollow it and do what I want and then I just cut with a parting tool I cut the glue block off and then just sand the remainder of the glue block off the bottom of my piece and I have lost none of the none of the tag glue in that so that's but you can use glue box for gluing bowls to face plates um, your imagination is is all that's stopping you there. Jam trucks. Another way of finishing the bottom of bowls and that sort of thing is to use a jam truck. So you, you put a scrap piece of wood in your in your lathe. And then let's say this bowl here I want to turn the bottom off it off. You turn the scrap piece of wood to fit your fit your um, work and you're set to go. Now again, uh, if you can bring the tailstock up initially and leave it on until the very last minute, then you can finish it off or you can leave it on until you're finished turning and then sand the rest off or whatever. But jam chucks hold really quite well. And the other thing you can do is, if you're worried about it, is when you've got it jammed on, you can take some masking tape or whatever and tape around that that joint there as well, and that'll also help hold it on. So that's a jam chuck. What else do we have? And friction drives. So you can take another scrap piece of wood, shape it however you want to shape it. You can put some friction material on there or not, it doesn't really matter that much. And then you can take your your work or whatever it is, put it on there, bring it up between tail centers, that's uh, to push on there. And the, the, the difference between, for instance, a jam puck chuck and friction drive is friction drive, you need the tail stock up at all times. Because the tail stock's holding it on, the block of wood that you're pushing it against is what's driving it. And you don't even, if you're dealing with, uh, say, a twice turn bowl, and so you just want to re true up the, re -true up the um, tenon, so the inside's rough, it's not finished, the outside's rough, not finished, but you want to make your tenon round again to remount it, you don't even need that, you can just put it right in your chuck. Because whatever damage this might do to the inside won't matter because you haven't finished turning the inside. So. so that's a, a friction drive. Jacob's chuck. Jacob's chuck. Same kind of chuck you find on a drill press. Um, This one fits in my tail stock for drilling stuff or whatever, but you can put them in the head stock as well. In the, uh, this is the wrong mortise, uh, the wrong uh, mortise taper for my head stock, but it would just go in there. Similar to that. Now for drilling, this is safe. You're pushing the drill bit in that way and that more tape holds that fine. But on the headstock side, if you put it in there for turning or whatever, you should really have the kind that's threaded. And once you put it in there, then you put a threaded rod through here into that and then wing nut or whatever to hold that in because, because it's just a, a horse taper. If you're using it to hold work in your headstock, it can come loose and believe me, that weighs a fair bit, and if that thing starts coming out of there and then goes flying, uh, 
God help anything that's in its way. So uh, you should never use a Morse taper, um, Jacob's chuck in the headstock without a drawbar. And I guess the last thing I'm going to show you today is a vacuum chuck. So there's different kinds and makes you can get, and mine's kind of a uh, combination of commercial and homemade. And I'll take my hand wheel off of there. This is a roto union that's hosed and, and connected over there to my vacuum pump. And then and you can buy these commercially, but these are some of the vacuum chucks that I've made for mine. And they're just in this case, I've just actually got a nut that's M33, epoxied into a block of wood, turned the groove there, put some PVC in it, put some non-skid around the outside. And that's my vacuum chuck. Now, if I've got something here, I can vacuum. because my uh, vacuum truck is near my camera. I just slapped that on there. I didn't center it or anything. It went just, let me show you this. I'm waiting for the vacuum to bleed off before I can even get this off in there. There we go. So normally what you would do is you would bring your tail stock up and for instance, here's a bowl that's not finished and it's, well, this one doesn't have, but if the center of the um, tennis still had the little mark in it, you'd put your tail stock on and push it onto your vacuum chuck and then turn the vacuum on. And uh, that should center your, center your work. So that's my biggest chuck. And then I just got varying sizes here that go on. Uh, and here's one I made with one of one way face plates. I just put a face plate on the piece of the MDF. Put that on there and I can just put that on there like that and it'll suck into that foam and Bob's your uncle. It's uh, again then I bring my tail stock up for as long as I can. Always, why not have the safety if, you can, if it's available to you and then I just pull the tail stock away to take the nub off the very bottom and sand it and Put embellishing in it or, or uh, finishing or whatever. So that's the vacuum chuck. Um, probably one of the most used tools I have in my shop. I use it for just about every bowl I finish. And uh, even natural edge bowl can be finished with it with that vacuum chuck because. Um, as you saw in one demonstration, I put it on the flat thing, but if this was natural edge, I could still put one of those cups inside. And as long as the bottom was sound, uh, it would work. Now, um, some woods, of course, won't work on the vacuum chuck, and then you're You're 
be uh, stuck using a jam chuck or or a donut chuck or any other of the other methods I showed you. But as you can see with this one here, it's got holes right through the bottom. Uh, there's no way to create a vacuum there. It's just going to suck right through there. And so this, this would never be held on with a vacuum chuck. Some woods that are really porous, um, they may be solid, but porous, and they'll suck. Or if you make them too thin, the vacuum will suck right through them as well. You can uh, put uh, paste wax or whatever on the bottom of it, and it'll go into the, into the pores and uh, stop that. Um, you do have to be careful with thin turned bowls. If you, uh, if you apply too much pressure to a thin turned bowl, you'll just collapse it. So uh, I can show you here my vacuum chuck setup is over here on the wall. And as you can see, there, it has a, no, oh, I got too much stuff in my way here. It has a bleed valve here and a gauge, and it's aimed over there where I can see it. But um, what I do when I put thin stuff on, I open that bleed valve so it lets some of the vacuum out. And uh, a full vacuum is about 25 pounds is all I can get here. Um, but 25 pounds vacuum is way too much for the, a thin bowl. So then I would slowly close this to, you know, 10 pounds or 15 pounds or whatever I think. And maybe it's not, it's, maybe it's inches of mercury or whatever it is. I, I, I'm not sure to tell you the truth. But anyway, um, I can apply as much or as little vacuum as I want by reading some of it off. Just keep in mind, the less vacuum you're applying, the, uh, the less hold you have. So be more delicate with your cuts. So uh, there are the ways that I have in my shop for holding stuff and so far uh, I haven't been stumped and been able to hold everything I wanted to hold uh, and uh, in a safe manner as long as you use the method safely. Like anything else, any method can be dangerous if you don't apply the proper technique or follow the rules. So I hope that uh, I hope that's enlightening for some of you new turners and uh, and um, yeah, it's uh, I guess uh, that's all I have. Thanks.